Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. With great marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. Hello, I'm here with my co-host. You wanna say your name and introduce yourself? I guess not. Hello and welcome back to a brand new studio vlog. My name is Megan. This week we're gonna be doing a lot of my Rezo calendar stuff. Um, it's Wednesday, so we're in the middle of the week, but I thought I would start vlogging. I haven't been sleeping well. I've been sleeping pretty terribly, like the worst insomnia of my life, which has been very frustrating. Um, so I haven't been like vlogging very much just because I've been so tired, but... Um, Rover, could you not do that? But the show must go on, so I'm here to vlog today. But yeah, I've been working on my Rizzo calendar. I have three illustrations so far, um, which means there's 10 left, which is quite quite a lot of illustrations um, to do. But honestly, so far I've been having a, a lot of fun, surprisingly. I didn't think I would have this much fun, but I think because um, there is such a time pressure with the project, like I have to make so many illustrations, I'm allowing myself to make the illustrations really simple, very basic. Um, so completing them is very easy. And then also I'm letting myself like not be such a perfectionist about things. I feel like sometimes when I make illustrations for like my Patreon and stuff like that, I get so in my head about making it like complicated enough and detailed enough and perfect enough. And so I will fiddle around with it for just like hours and hours and hours. And I wanna get better about being less precious with my art, letting mistakes happen um, and just letting my art be imperfect. So I feel like this little art challenge I've basically given myself um, has been really, really nice. And it was quite intimidating in the beginning because making 13 illustrations is a lot because there's gonna be a cover, um, but they're also Rizzo. So making a Rizzo graph illustration just takes way longer for me because I have to color separate every layer um, and they're all set on multiply so they all bleed over each other. So it's just like a bit more complicated than making like a regular illustration. This stuff is so good. Let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor. Thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. You guys already know Squarespace can help you build a beautiful website, help you grow your online business, etc. One of my favorite things about Squarespace is their beautiful templates. They have templates for a lot of different purposes. So if you want to build a website to highlight a local business or a portfolio or a blog or a restaurant, they got you covered. I also really like how not only you can have these templates to choose from, you can design individual pages to suit whatever needs you have. So for example, here is my comics page. I have a bunch of different comics I made in the past. And if you click on a specific one, it brings you into another page I made super easily that has the individual frames of that comic. So I feel like Squarespace made it really easy for me to highlight all of my comics. If you're interested, go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Megan Wang for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, now let's get into the risograph walkthrough, etc. I've done this before, but I kind of just wanted to do it again um, because I'm not sure if people have seen that video and just because making this Rezo calendar is a huge part and subject of this video. So I thought, why not give you another walkthrough? So here's my process. I start off with the super rough sketch and then I will take a thicker line art brush and go over it again, um, just to try to refine my line art. I really want my line art to be very, very honed, um, even more so than a regular illustration, because when I start coloring the Rizzo 
file or whatever, it's super important that I kind of know where everything's gonna go, where everything's gonna be, because um, making changes down the line is much harder than when you're doing a regular illustration because you can just draw over it. But when you do a Rizzo illustration, um, all your colors kind of blend on top of each other and they work very much in relation. So it's super hard to make adjustments to your coloring later on. Um, I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully when I show you a little bit of the coloring process, that will become more clear. Basically, I would just make sure that your line art is super, super locked down and you're not gonna wanna make any huge changes to the composition of your piece later on. Um, and this is pretty much how I start most of my illustrations. I like to just do a really rough sketch and then refine it um, on a different layer and then use like the opacity levels to make the original sketch a little lighter and then just kind of repeat that until I'm satisfied. And then in terms of the actual coloring, you wanna set your layers to multiply and make sure that no matter how many colors you're using, you don't mix the colors on the same layer. So you'll see here, all my blues are on their own layers and all my oranges are on their own layers. And before I put the file onto Photoshop, I will combine all the blues and combine all the oranges. Um, and the really cool thing about Rizzo is that you can make your different layers, uh, different opacity levels, and that kind of shows how um, opaque the ink is gonna go onto the paper when it's really being printed. So you get a bunch of different variances of the same ink color, and you can also layer them with different colors to get new colors. So even though you're only using two ink colors, you get a bunch of different poss color possibilities. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm putting orange on a layer and then kind of dragging the opacity down so I get a different opacity level. So it's like a different shade of orange, if that makes sense. Um, so here, for example, I'm drawing out the bow tie and then I'm going to find a layer where the orange opacity level is a bit lower and then color it in. So it kind of looks like that. It's less one dimensional. And then I'm going to find that blue shelf layer and then erase that because I don't want that to show. And yeah, that's pretty much how I prepare my files. In a different video that I'll link above, I show you how I do it on Photoshop, but I pretty much just follow this tutorial by Resolve Studio to prepare my files. And that's pretty much it. Rover. rubbing all over it. Yeah, it's true. Oh, thank you.
So right now I'm basically just trying to decide like where this, the name, <laughs> the name of the month or where like the month text is gonna go because I originally designed it to like just look like this but I'm, I don't know, I'm feeling a little bit weird about having it on the side like this. I do kind of like it like that, so I might just fix it to do that. I feel like it looks good, like that. Um, and I did a poll and everyone wanted, actually no, that's a lie, not everyone. It was pretty close, but most people wanted Monday start, so that's what we're doing. Monday start only won by a little bit, but it still did win, so. Even though I prefer Sunday start, people really wanted the Monday and I gotta give the people what they want. I wanna make this area as big as possible. I like being able to use my calendars to plan. Like for example, this calendar is super cute and I love it so much, but it's not like a usable calendar in that way. It's just to kind of give you, it's kind of like aesthetic decoration. These kinds of calendars where you can actually write in are really nice for me. So this is like a pretty final spread of what I want it to look like. And I think it's so cute. Um, okay, so yeah, I guess I am pretty set on having the, the thing up here. I was pretty torn too on having it like in the center, but I feel like the center just looks a little wrong. I don't know. So yeah, there's still a lot of like fiddling I have to do, but. Like it this I don't like so I might have to move it to the bottom or something I don't really know what I'm gonna do with the March I, I might have to curve it um, so it doesn't look so weird right there but you know aside from that I do think this illustration is pretty cute so yes I'm excited about this one It's around two and I'm basically done for the day. I've noticed that um, drawing so much every day is making my wrist hurt a little bit. So I wanna make sure I don't overdo it, especially because um, I still have like eight more illustrations to do. Um, 
So yeah, there's there's still quite a little bit, um, there's still quite a few illustrations I have to get done for the calendar, so I definitely don't want to burn myself out. Um, and yeah, even though I have like more time left in the day where I could work, I don't really want to necessarily like keep myself busy and pack in the work, like pack in work time during my work hours, if that makes sense, just for the sake of working. Um, because I did make a little schedule for myself. I have like one illustration a day for the next like two or three weeks. Um, so yeah, I'm in it for the long haul and I don't want to do too much. Oh, I was gonna talk about what I've been reading lately. So I just finished reading um, Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater, as well as The Year of the Witching um, by Alexis Henderson. And they were both like really, really enjoyable reads for me. Um, the first one is kind of like a, fairy regency kind of story and I thought it was really well written so I really enjoyed it um, and then the next one was like very spooky witchy culty vibes I thought the ending was kind of left something to be desired but I still really enjoyed it um, so yeah I've also been trying to get into the fall mood too so I'm trying to read more like dark darker stuff right now so currently I'm reading If We Were Villains um, I forget the author's name, but I heard it's like very dark academia and um, kind of similar to The Secret History, which is one of my favorite books. If you've been reading anything, I would love to know. Um, I've been trying to get into the fall spirit, like I said, but it's really difficult. It's still like 90 to 85 degrees out. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely struggling to <laughs> feel the fall spirit. Um, but my hope is that it cools down, but it's not looking good these days. Yeah, I'll see you when I see you. I don't know why he doesn't want to leave. Nice job, Cosmo. What you get? Mocha croissant.